Fisher, followed by William Spear. Hi, I'm Greg Fisher. I'm here in my role as a director for Americans for Legal Reform. Um, my point is really short. Uh, I'm going to put a uh, material safety data, data sheet into the record uh, for aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide is a known skin and eye irritant. Uh, I should speak it up right there. We're going to be spraying uh, irritants into our airspace. Uh, also, um, it's worse than that. Actually, uh, I'm going to uh, also submit a study from the American Thoracic Association which uh, links aluminum oxide particulates to uh, uh, pulmonary fibrosis. Mm -hmm. Just in short, uh, uh, I incorporate what, uh, what prior speakers said. Uh, there is uh, significant health risk from inhaling uh, aluminum compounds. And uh, uh, Americans really support, supports this legislation wholeheartedly. Thank you. Thank you. William Spear, followed by Harold Cohn. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this piece of legislation is absolutely necessary. And it is also necessary that we not forget the Constitution, and in the Constitution, it does mention promoting the general welfare, and this is in violation of that, uh, with all of the spraying that's going on. Uh, also, we have to keep in mind the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution, which says that all power is not given to the federal government, the states, besides the states and the people, and the Tenth Amendment has not been used enough and I would want New York State to do more of what Arizona and Texas has already done, and that is to claim uh, state sovereignty. sovereignty over those powers that are clearly in the Constitution. What we have now is that the Constitution itself seems to be something that the federal government sees as inconvenient. Uh, let's take a look at the Fourth Amendment. And when you look at the Fourth Amendment, it's being eviscerated by Homeland Security. Right. So when I speak about spraying, I do want to remind you that if somebody's a little too articulate and has too many facts, they can be deemed an enemy of the state where there is no evidence of violence, threat of violence, or desire of violence, but somebody who might get in the way of either the military or corporate profits in the public interest of health. Now, I would like you to keep in mind that when you take a look at the name of chemical compounds, keep in mind three metals and three non-metals. The three metals is you have aluminum, barium, and strontium. Okay? Um, now, when it comes to the non-metals, you're going to have the um, you're going to Sulfur. have the the sulfides, the um, <clears throat> the chlorides, and the fluorides, the chlorides, the sulfides. Now, the thing is that you can have an enormous number of chemical compounds that has any one or more of those. But the result is, and I brought in the evidence here, yet we want copies of this, it's fine. Um, one of them deals with carcinogens, raising the cancer rates. And the other one deals with lowering the fertility rates. The way the fertility rates have been lowered and it was first discovered with frogs, and then it started to show up in terms of statistics involving people, is that first there's the obvious one, our lower sperm counts, but then was something less obvious, and that was the issue of women's eggs not being receptive. And that is where, well, what is normal is that the first sperm is accepted and all others are rejected but the first sperm is now being rejected as all other sperm, and this means infertility inflicted on the woman. And what you find is that this coincides with higher rates of having um, 
chemical compounds ending up in the air and then percolating down into the ground every time it rains into the aquifer. And therefore it mixes with drinking water. So you're either breathing it or you're ingesting it. And what are the, what are the three items you have? Um, you have aluminum, you have barium and strontium. Then you have on the non-metal side, you have chlorination, the fluorination, and, and the sulfides. And when you put all that together, we are having virtual chemical attack on us by our own government. And why would they do that? There's a number of reasons. First, you have basically we're being used as guinea pigs um, as the military um, where people on their deathbed have then uh, <coughs> have let things out because they didn't like holding in what they had to sign these confidentiality agreements. And these are not confidentiality agreements, confidentiality agreements in order to protect the name of our agents overseas. And I want to keep secrecy of our names of our agents overseas until they get home. But what we're talking about here is secrecy over what is done that affects health. So the military, not knowing the health consequences, is using us as guinea pigs. Then you have something else. You have contracts between the government and private industry.